What's up guys and welcome to One Take. I'm Gil and today we're talking about Raised by Wolves episodes 6 and 7. This video will of course be full of spoilers through episode 7, so you've been warned. And we have some big questions to talk about this week. Who was Mother really talking to in The Sim? Why does Tali seemingly want Campion to take his own life? And why does Marcus keep seeing that scalpel? We'll talk about all that and more in today's breakdown. First, some overall thoughts. I'm still thoroughly enjoying the show, especially anything that directly involves mother, father, Marcus, or Sue, especially the mother, father scenes, any sequences where we see the two of them together, especially where there's some conflict between them. I love those scenes. I'm also pretty invested and the growing mystery around who or what resides on Kepler 22b. The one thing that's not quite working for me is the children themselves. I'm not sure we spent enough time with them to fully understand their motivations, especially when we see their torn loyalties between the humans and the androids. But we'll get into all that. Like I said, overall, really liking the show. Let's get into the details. First, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying these videos, to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Every time that subscriber count goes up even by a little bit, it's that much more motivating to get the next video done. So if you subscribe, you're an amazing person. With that, let's get into the episode. Mother is spending more and more time in the sim, reliving her memories with Campion. Father notices she's gone, but doesn't know where she's going. And he accuses her of not spending enough time with the children or himself. This is a really interesting development that I wasn't expecting. We sort of have a bizarre love triangle between mother, father, and this memory of Campion. I say bizarre because it's unclear how real or how human this love is, but there are definitely conflicting desires between these characters. This also mirrors what Marcus and Sue are going through. Sue is losing Marcus to whatever mysterious force is whispering to Marcus and seems to be planting some religious belief in his mind. Similarly, father is losing mother to her love for Campion. Father pointed out in a previous episode that when mother talks about Campion, her creator, it sounds sort of religious. It is based on a real person, but remember, Campion is somebody that mother likely will never be able to physically meet again. He may no longer even be alive. So when she speaks of him, it sounds spiritual. He has taken on the role of a quasi-religious figure. So Sue is losing Marcus and father is losing mother in both cases to some sort of a spiritual quasi-religious force. Inside the red igloo-like structure, Mother is looking over all the drawings that the children have left. Then she spots one which seems to depict her and Campion right before Mother left Earth. You can see the destroyed buildings, you see the vessel, and you see Campion kissing Mother, who seems to have very spiky hair in this depiction. I loved Mother's reaction to seeing that drawing. We see this sort of embarrassment and paranoia at somebody knowing what Mother's been up to all this time, but you see those emotions filtered through an android. As always, Amanda Collins' performance is top-notch and really sells those emotions. Later, we'll also learn that this was drawn in Tolly's style, which is, of course, one more example of Tali seemingly haunting our protagonists here. I do think we get some clues as to who has actually done this drawing and who is mimicking Tali, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Things are tense between mother and father, but they are also tense between Paul and Campion. Paul is apparently getting sick of eating fungus, so he decides to build a trap which they can use to kill the creatures and not have to get their hands dirty. They don't have to kill the creatures, the trap will do it all for them. Campion is not happy about this and he lets Paul know by punching him in the face about four or five times. Now I mentioned up front that one of the aspects of the show that's not quite working for me is the children characters. I don't think they've been developed enough that we can always understand their motivations. So it's great when a character can surprise you as as long as the surprise doesn't feel out of left field. So here, I was surprised by Campion's violent outburst, but for me, it felt jarring. I don't think the seeds were planted for this violent side of Campion. Now, looking back, I can sort of rationalize it. We know that Campion is not going to be super well adjusted. He was raised by a couple of androids, and conveniently, earlier this episode, it was established that Campion's feeling jealous of Paul when Paul is able to solve that straw puzzle in a matter of a minute or two. 
So I can look back and justify Campion's violent outburst, but in the moment it was more of a head scratcher. Though I do like what the scene led into. We basically get Mother chiding Campion for his violent outburst, but then he calls her out for her hypocrisy. He asks, how many people did you kill on Earth? And Mother basically responds, do as I say, not as I do. And this is an issue I hope they continue to press on because I'd love to better understand Mother's thinking. We've seen that she displays something like emotion. So does she feel any guilt or remorse over her actions? Her mission is to protect humanity, yet in the service of that, she's had to kill a lot of people, including, as Marcus points out later, other children. She rescued some kids from the Ark, but let the others die. Does she feel any guilt over that? Or, as an android, does she have the superpower of full compartmentalization? She can kill people as long as it's in service of the mission. She won't feel any guilt over that. I'd love to see that explored further. Then we get another mother-father confrontation. And as I've said before, these are the moments where the show shines for me. I love when mother and father go at each other because I always feel both sides of it. Mother accuses father of having plugged into the sim, seeing what she's been up to, essentially spying on her browser history. Then father drew the picture in Tali's style as a way of sort of teaching her a lesson. In this moment, I feel father's frustration. I feel mother's embarrassment and paranoia. And that's such a testament to the show. It's incredible how much we're able to feel for these two characters, even though neither of them are human. They're both androids and it definitely shows. Then Mother goes back to plug into the sim and we get a very interesting sequence. But before we talk about that, let's check in on the Mithraic. Lucius once again thanks Marcus for forgiving his father. And he basically says, I read the report, but Marcus, I'd love to hear if you have anything to add to it. And I'm such a fan of the sequences where Marcus gets close to being found out and has to basically worm his way out of it. So he says to Lucius, why don't you tell me what was in the report? Then we finally learn the truth of what happened. Basically, they captured an atheist girl. And Lucius' father, instead of executing her, lets her live. They take her as a prisoner. But she blows herself up, killing other Mithraic soldiers in the process. So Marcus executed Lucius' father. Caleb, I think, is doing as good a job as possible at pretending to be Marcus. But this scene clearly sets up Lucius beginning to be suspicious. They find one of the capsules where Mother's been plugging into the sim and checking the logs. Marcus sees that she spends hours at a time in there. So they figure the next time she's plugged in, she'll be vulnerable and they can set a trap. After her confrontation with Father, Mother returns to the capsule, plugs into the sim, and that's their chance. They set the trap. They basically lay some bombs out. They have the prisoner hold that big light absorption device. They figure while she's plugged in, they can use that to drain some of her dark photon power and then set off the bombs. By the way, notice in this sequence, a lot of the Mithraic are holding little objects that look a lot like that large object they found in the desert a couple of episodes ago. So mother's in the sim, they set the trap. The prisoner goes to Marcus and says, if I survive, will I be pardoned? And Marcus flippantly says, you betcha. And I just love the Marcus character. Travis Fimmel has definitely been one of the highlights of this show. Then we get to Mother in the Sim, and this is where things go a little bit nuts this episode. She asks the computer if somebody else has been in the Sim, and she finds out that yes, there has been another user. She asks if that user was an android. The computer says unknown. Then she asks if the user is in the Sim now, and the computer doesn't respond. Now, I've had the theory for a few episodes that there is some intelligence residing on Kepler-22b. I think it is the one that's been whispering to Marcus. I think it manifests as Tali. And I think in this episode, it chooses to speak to Mother in the sim, appearing as Campion. I have a lot to say about that, too much to include in this review. So I'll actually be releasing a video a little bit later today that deep dives into my theory and lays out all the evidence we have from the last seven episodes. 
But in brief, my thesis is basically that there exists on Kepler-22b an extremely involved artificial intelligence. One that's so advanced, it appears almost godlike. It's transcended its computer form. And by the way, if you wanna see that video when it's available, just make sure you're subscribed and I'll also add a card for it here so you can just click that and go right to it. If you keep that in mind, then in the next scene where Mother is speaking to Campion, a lot of his lines make a lot more sense. We get some setup for it right at the beginning of this sequence when Mother asks the computer if the other user is an Android. The computer says unknown, implying that whatever has entered the simulation is something that's not quite human, but also not quite Android. Then Mother speaks to the Campion that appears in this simulation and figures out that he's the one who lured her into it. She says, you made the drawing. When I saw Tali, that was you too. You lured me here. And she says, I'm malfunctioning. So Mother essentially believes that she has a virus, basically the Android version of it's all in your head. This virus caused her to see Tali and it caused her to make the drawing that she saw in the red igloo. Campion confirms that he's the one who lured her there saying, I've been alone for so long, Mother. I had almost given up hope. This line again fits the theory of an intelligence residing on Kepler-22b, because if that intelligence has been here for a long time, then it has been alone at least until Mother and the others arrived. Then things get a little bit scary, because up until this point, Mother's mission has been to protect humanity. There's certainly been a lot of collateral damage along the way, but at the very least, she does want to genuinely protect her children. However, here, this other campion starts planting the seeds for a more cynical view, painting humanity as inferior beings. Campion presses Mother to say what she really wants, but she keeps saying that I'm an android, I don't have desire, all I want to do is complete the mission and keep my children safe. Campion says no matter how many times you save them, they will destroy themselves again and again. He basically says humanity is hopeless. He says they are antiques chained to time. Their lives are only dying. He adds, you are eternal, pure as the expanse of space. Tell me what you want. And finally, Mother says, I want you. Then we get an amazing scene where Campion and Mother have sex and sort of float inside the sim while this operatic music plays. And it's just a crazy scene because you know that Mother is going through something unnatural. This android is having a very human experience and you get the feeling that this will somehow change her in some very significant ways. She's going to leave the sim with a very different view of humanity and a very different view of herself. So it's unclear what exactly the intelligence wants, but I think at least part of it is that it wants to show Mother you don't need to concern yourself with humanity. I transcend humanity, I am superior to them, and you can be too. So that's where it keeps telling her you have to form your own desires and forget about this mission to protect humanity. The intelligence knows that if Mother hears these words from Campion, they will have a lot more credibility. Outside the sim, once Mother is weakened, they try to detonate the bombs, but it doesn't work. Then we start to see some rocks rise from the ground. The detonator itself explodes and one of the Mithraic soldiers loses a hand. Then the light absorber explodes and things basically go crazy. Mother rises from the capsule, some boulders rise and start to explode. Then Mother is able to escape. I think this is, again, the intelligence at work protecting Mother, and it looks like it can interact with the physical world and interfere with electronics. It messes with the detonator, and then from Sue, we see that it's taken down communications. So Sue is with the other Mithraic watching the children, and they totally lose communication with Marcus. Speaking of Sue, she's nervous because they haven't heard from Marcus, and decides that it's time to make a move. So she gets the other Mithraic soldiers to come with her and rescue Paul. When all this goes down, Vita is busy playing hide and seek with Tali. When she goes into the red igloo structure, she sees the drawing which caused Mother so much anxiety, and it sort of incinerates itself. I think that's the intelligence basically covering its tracks. Then Father sees that the Mithraic have arrived, so he sends the children to the lander, but after they get there, Hunter announces Father's position to the soldiers, so they fire upon him. Mother returns and finds Father basically on death's door. She pops one of the soldiers. Lucius gets away, which felt a little plot armory to me. 
but mother gets to father and he once again dies in her arms. I loved the moment between mother and father because again, they're androids and I know that father can be brought back, but they do such a good job that I do feel something in that scene. When father says with his dying breath, I was worried about you, mother. Your well-being is a priority to me. That really pulled on my heartstrings, and again, that's just so impressive considering what we know about these characters. Now, one aspect of the show which I mentioned wasn't quite working for me is the children characters, and this sequence was an example of that. I don't think we've spent enough time with them to understand their motivations, specifically their disposition towards the androids and towards the Mithraic, because this whole sequence is a conflict. The Mithraic are coming to rescue the children, but they're not necessarily 100% on board with being rescued. That's interesting, and I wish we understood it a little bit better. When it comes to Tempest, I feel like I have a solid grasp. She understandably hates the Mithraic and views Mother as having rescued her. However, when it comes to the other children, it's a little bit less clear. Hunter and Holly clearly are on the side of the Mithraic, but they do show some sympathy and some worry about Mother and Father's safety. That didn't feel totally earned to me. Mother killed the other children on the Ark. She potentially killed some of these children's parents and dealt a potentially lethal blow to humanity's survival chances. So she should be a deeply unsympathetic character to these children. So for these children to make any kind of a transition to the point where they have a sort of split allegiance between Mother and Father and the Mithraic, that's a transition which I really feel like I needed to see rather than just hear about it. So I think the show could have benefited from an additional episode where maybe the pace slows down a little bit and we just spend some time developing the children characters and seeing this transition where they start to look at mother and father as slightly more sympathetic characters. Then we get to the reunion of Marcus, Sue, and Paul finally back together again. And I love the tension of this scene where Marcus essentially tells Sue you screwed up. By moving in too early, you forced us into a position where we now need to send Paul back to Mother and take an offensive strike against her. And I love the entire sequence that follows. It was extremely tense when Paul goes up behind Mother, steals her eyes, runs away, and then Marcus hits her with the axe. And before he can deal a lethal blow, he hears that whisper again telling him, let her live. And I think that's the intelligence speaking to him, once again protecting Mother. Campion runs after her and draws a gun from one of the Mithraic soldiers, but Mother talks him down, basically saying violence isn't going to solve anything. Marcus throws Campion as a prisoner into one of the silos, and inside, the remnants from one of the creatures hangs above him. And this is just another reminder of how great the creature design is, especially in these moments where you can tell it's a totally practical effect. Later, Tempest pays him a visit and warns him that he's going to have to pretend to be a believer and accept the Mithraic religion because that's the only way they'll let him go. Afterwards, Campion is seemingly haunted by Tali again, and in this episode, the Tali sequences get a lot creepier. They're borderline something you would see out of a horror movie. She tells him, we miss you, kill yourself, then we can all be together, we're waiting for you. She leaves him with a stick doll and wrapped in it is a sharp object, I think a claw from one of the creatures. And don't worry, we will definitely come back to this and talk about why Tali might want Campion to take his own life. Later, the Mithraic bring Campion to their makeshift church, where he'll go through his baptism procedure, but as they're having him repeat various verses, he notices that their shrine has been built from the headstones of his friends. Then they try to calm him down by saying, don't worry about it, atheists don't even have souls, so these are just rocks. So Campion runs, takes his sharp object, and stabs Father in the arm, but Father grabs him and throws him back in the silo. I love this whole sequence because the whole time I was watching it, I was worried that Campion would decide to stand by his integrity and basically say, I will not accept soul into my heart. And I was thinking that's dumb 
Just go along with what they're saying, pretend to be a believer, and in your heart of hearts, continue to think whatever you want. So if Campion was gonna break away from that, there had to be a good reason for it, and I think they found it. Campion sees the headstones, and then when they put the cherry on top of that by saying atheists, i.e. your friends, don't even have souls, you completely understand the rage that Campion feels and understand why he would make an emotional decision like this that could cost him his freedom. Back in the silo, Campion is once again haunted by Tali. This time, she very creepily crawls down the rope that's holding the creature. She knocks it from the rope and you see a noose in its place. Basically, once again, trying to convince Campion to take his life. So I do think that this is the intelligence communicating with Campion the same one who was talking to Mother in The Sim. However, here it's using Tali as a vessel. And why is it using Tali? I can think of a couple of options. One, maybe it can't use any of the other children because of the way they died, the fact that they died of radiation poisoning, or perhaps falling down the pit somehow gives the intelligence access to Tali's body and is able to use her as a vessel in a way that it couldn't if she died above ground like the other children. So why does the intelligence want Campion to die? Well, from its conversation with Mother and the Sim, we know that it doesn't hold humanity in very high esteem but it recognizes that Mother is tethered to humanity by her mission. She wants to protect her children. Specifically, she wants to protect Campion. So perhaps the intelligence thinks that if it takes Campion out of the picture, that would essentially untether Mother from humanity by freeing her from her mission of protecting her children. So I think that's what it's trying to accomplish here. Back with the Mithraic, Marcus and Sue argue over what to do with Mother, this necromancer they just captured. Sue wants her destroyed, but Marcus convinces her that they'd be better off trying to reprogram her because he points out she is the most powerful weapon on that planet. Once they settle down in the tropical zone, they'll need to be able to protect themselves because there could be other ships besides the Ark that are out there. That was an incredibly intriguing line to me because I would love to better understand humanity's current state in this series. My assumption up until now is that humanity is on the verge of extinction and the people on that arc were basically humanity's last hope. But looking at the behavior of these characters, that's not the vibe I've been getting. I would expect to see them basically in mourning and in grief over the fact that humanity's on the verge of extinction, but we definitely haven't seen that. So perhaps Marcus is right that there could be other humans out there, and that's a pretty intriguing prospect. Also in this scene, Marcus notices the scalpel that Mother created, the same one that he was holding in his hallucination when Sue dies on top of him. So what does this scalpel represent? Well, I believe that hallucination was the intelligence communicating with Marcus. And what does it want from him? Well, it whispers to him as though he's a prophet. So it seems to think that Marcus can play a role in whatever its plans are, similar to Mother. However, in Mother's case, the intelligence sees that she's held back by her love for humanity. So it tries to untether her from that by killing Campion. In Marcus's case, what holds him back? Well, he's just starting to embrace his belief. He's starting to become a prophet, but his wife, Sue, is an atheist, and she tethers him to that atheism. So perhaps that hallucination was our first inkling that the intelligence wants Marcus to kill Sue and untether himself from atheism so he can fully embrace his belief and fully embrace his role as a prophet. Marcus has Mother tied up in one of the silos and he goes to interrogate her. In the conversation, we find out that Mother recognized the surgical scars on Marcus's face and realized he's an atheist. That's why she let him live back in episode one. And I don't usually do this, but I'm going to give myself a mild pat on the back because I did predict that might be why she let him live back in my episode one review. But who's keeping score? Anyway, I love this whole sequence, just seeing them question each other's motives and get this confrontation that we've been building up to for episodes. Also, Marcus seems to know what Mother's been up to in The Sim because as a sort of taunt, he gets very close to her, just short of kissing her. And then she kind of gives him this side eye. So how could he know what she was up to? Well, earlier, Mother accused Father of plugging into the sim and seeing what she's been doing in there. Perhaps between scenes, Marcus did exactly that. In a later sequence, Mother is able to get under his skin by essentially telling him he's totally 
incapable of raising a child, and everything he's done has been in his self-interest. Then he leaves the silo and again hears those whispers. This time it says, let her live, then you will become king of this world. I do think that's the intelligence communicating with him, and I assume it's manipulating him here, just trying to protect mother, and ultimately I doubt it's going to deliver on its promise that Marcus is going to be king of anything. Paul approaches Marcus, and true to mother's word, he does a very poor job of raising this child, because when Paul approaches, Marcus shoves him to the ground. Then he goes back to the red igloo where he inspects that scalpel. Then he looks at his reflection where he sees his old face when he was still Caleb, then sees all the bandages he had after his plastic surgery. I think that quick hallucination basically served two purposes. One, from a character standpoint, it just shows us what's on Marcus's mind. He's thinking about who he really is under the surface. And two, more logistically, it reminds us what Caleb's face looks like, so we recognize him when he shows up for that knife fight later. Then Sue shows up to confront Marcus for what he did to Paul, and she accuses him of not getting anything done. He hasn't reprogrammed Mother, he hasn't destroyed her yet, so the intelligence wants Marcus to turn against Sue, and I think we're seeing it's starting to work. He tells her how she's only here because of him. She was ready to blow herself up, but he saved her, gave her a child, and got her to this point. And by the way, that gives us a little window into Sue's past. If she was willing to sacrifice herself for the atheist cause, that tells us how strong her convictions were. Marcus gets father to grab mother and drag her along so they can bring her to one of those pits and drop her in it. Tempest follows but gets stopped by some creatures, so it's unclear how much of this she actually witnesses. So I've said it a million times, but I love all the interactions between mother and father. They're probably the characters that hold the most emotional weight for me. And this sequence in particular, as mother's being brought to what she thinks is her death, she keeps speaking up to father, saying, Father, in case you can hear me, thank you for all that you've done for the children and me. Serving alongside you has enriched the mission. So I loved all that. I loved everything she said to him. Then father goes to drop mother down the pit, but at the last second grabs the rope and saves her. Throughout the episode, we saw father's finger twitching. So perhaps a small part of him survived and was able to come to the surface at the last second. Now, multiple times, we've seen the intelligence step in to help Mother, and perhaps here, it helped bring that part of Father to the surface. While Mother climbs out of the pit, Marcus suddenly finds himself face to face with Caleb, his old self, and they get into a sort of knife fight. Visually, this whole thing was awesome. I thought they did a really good job of having the two characters mimic each other's movements exactly, right up until the point where Caleb is able to slice Marcus in the side. I assume this was all a divergence tactic to keep Marcus distracted while Mother can escape from the pit. Then before the episode ends, Paul sees that his mouse has returned to him alive. It's a miracle. He goes to tell Sue about it and she says, are you sure it wasn't just hiding in the walls? And Paul says, I don't know. And I love the fact that he goes from, it's a miracle to, I don't know. Anyway, they find Marcus bleeding and his wound looks really bad. You can see his internal organs through it. As Sue sits above him, Marcus mutters, we're not going anywhere. The prophecy about the orphan kid in the empty land, it's not Paul, it's not the atheist kid, it's me, he told me. And then Sue asks, who told you? So this is a big moment. It means that Marcus is a true believer now. I think he's done fighting the voices and I'm really curious to see where he goes from here. Also, what is with the mouse coming back? My guess is that it's a small miracle which reinforces Paul's belief. Why does that need to happen? I'm thinking maybe the intelligence sees that Marcus can play a role, but it also sees that Paul can play a role. And similar to Marcus, Sue is somebody that could hold Paul back. Even in this small example, Paul sees a miracle and Sue tries to downplay it. So the intelligence sees Sue could get in the way, so it decides to give Paul this minor miracle to reinforce his belief. Anyway, a lot of strange things happen in these episodes, lots to speculate on. So definitely let me know in the comments what you thought. Do you agree with my theories? Do you have alternate theories? Or do you just have no idea what's going on? Either way, let me know and we'll keep the conversation going. And to wrap it up, I'll say I really enjoyed these episodes despite the handful of things I pointed out. And with only three 
episodes to go. I'm really excited to see where we go from here and how things wrap up. With that, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. And this is a good opportunity to remind you once again that I do have another video coming out a little later today, which will do a deep dive on my theory about the intelligence and what it's doing here on Kepler-22b. So you'll definitely want to make sure you're subscribed and can check that out later. With that, thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.